Chris, uh, thank you for the excellent pre presentation. Can you hear me? Yes. My name is Bobby Seigel. In the last week or so, Facebook has been under tremendous attack in the UK um, for reasons where Facebook is being, using, is being used by sexual offenders. Mm -hmm. and there is some talk of policing of Facebook and control of Facebook. What are your views of that? And there's talk of putting a panic button on there as well. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah, so <clears throat> privacy has been at the core of what Facebook has been about from the very beginning. And in reading about, um, you know, some of the things that have happened recently in, in the UK and elsewhere, I think, um, uh, you know, my own personal condolences go out to um, the young woman's family and um, everyone who's, who's uh, been through uh, that experience. But the thing that is really unique about what Facebook does is give complete control over users, over their information. And just as in everyday life, we have to be smart about who we talk to, what we talk about, and to not necessarily assume that a stranger who approaches us and friendly is exactly what they seem. So too do we need to do the same thing on the web. I think that the more that we can teach ourselves, but more importantly, our kids, who are on uh, Facebook and all across the web to be careful and to be intentional about the information that they share, the stronger we'll be as, as a society. I, I think that there's no way to get around this, th this issue. No matter what, we're going to be able to text random uh, people on our cell phones. We're going to be able to connect to people that we don't know on the, on the web. And the challenge is just to be thoughtful about how we do it and to make sure that um, we connect to, to individuals that we know. In particular on Facebook, what I always recommend is only accept people to be your friends who are your friends. You know, it sounds, it sounds like the easiest thing in the world, but I think it's um, something that um, uh, people feel a little weird about. They feel like they shouldn't ignore a request from someone that they don't know. It's a friend request. If you, don't, if you don't know the person, you don't necessarily need, uh, need to be friends with them. And that's what I personally do, and that's what I recommend to people across the board. But you at the end of the day, you have to be smart about how you use the network, and you have to be intentional. Chris, you have 1,000 friends on your Facebook. I do. Huh. I do. Yeah. I have you said the average is 130. The average is 130. I've been on Facebook for six years, and I meet a lot of people. So um, I do. At your age, I presume you're uh, very, very young. Um, <laughs> how, how do you deal with the tremendous success and fortune that you obviously have amassed at such an early age? Yeah, I mean, I think you, you keep everything in perspective. I think that, um, you know, day by day, you'd think that your life would change a lot, but it actually doesn't. I still have the same friends and, and do the same things. I'm, I've been very fortunate to have been part of, you know, Facebook and, and the Obama campaign and to have really been able to leverage a lot of the, the technologies that exist um, to, be, I, I believe, to, to, on the whole, better the world. Um, and day by day, you know, you are just who you are and um, you, you know, you, you try to do your, do your best. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a there's immense opportunity. I think that just because the the web has evolved in the way that it has, um, I think more and more people realize that there's a true paradigm shift happening. And so the extent to which I can, you know, contribute my own skills and my own background and work to the causes and and that are important to me and the people that um, that I think genuinely are interested in embracing the technology, the better. I'm I'm very fortunate to be able to 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 be able to help. So you're, you're, you don't feel you're done with everything and you're going to just sit back now and enjoy no. the fame and money? No, definitely not. I'm just getting started. <laughs> Good. Um, six years of Facebook, a very simple question. What do we expect in the next level? Are you planning, changing? I mean, something has to give. What, what do we expect in the next decade? I wish we knew. <laughs> it's, it's a short answer to the question. I mean... Um, I think uh, I think 
the web changes so quickly and it's such a dynamic place that um, we have to be constantly uh, open to change. So when it comes to Facebook in particular, there are a couple key trends that I think will um, continue to, to exist. I think that the, for the past six years, most of the time when people have engaged on Facebook, they've typed in facebook.com into the URL bar of their web browser, and that's the way they've, they've engaged. But we're seeing this shift now where um, I think in the future, five years from now, ten years from now, most people will engage with Facebook, but will never come to Facebook.com or, or won't uh, need to come to Facebook.com with the same regularity that they do today. That means that I envision a web where Facebook is distributed across it. So particularly with Facebook Connect, for those of you who don't know, I mentioned it um, in my talk in terms of the Economic Times, but it enables any website on the, on, on the web to put in a, a little bit of, of code and enable individuals to be able to interact with their Facebook friends, all of that content, all of those people inside their own domain. So the Economic Times' website, for instance. That's a, a, a revolution, I think, on the web, which will only continue to um, uh, increasingly organize the content that exists in a social fashion. So that's one big thing. The other big thing is the mobile technology. I mean, I'm in a country where I think it's 400 million people, probably more than that now, are connected to one another through their phones, but only 50 million or so are actually connected to the web on a on a day-to-day -day basis. That, if anything, is a testament to the future of, of, of Facebook, which is um, accessed on the go from a whole uh, host of, of entry points, including, uh, including mobile phones. Um, but that will radically change the way that people exist on the site. On the site itself, I think that we'll see um, uh, we'll see it become then. are we back great we'll see uh, d uh, to, to sum up we'll, we'll see the site itself become increasingly simple. I hope I think that um, the experience on Facebook over time because there's so many interesting things to do um, has become. Uh, uh, for a time increasingly complex, but with this mo uh, most recent redesign and for uh, some of the, the, the stuff that's planned in the future, simplicity will be the key. So those are three key things that I think will change over the next 10 years, Can five years. Can just uh, go back to your first point? This is one of the things that I think Google is most scared about, that people are going to stay within for Facebook and do their searches and find all their recommendations from their own network and from their Facebook friends. Is this something that you're working towards, or is this something that's going to happen? Well, I think that there's a there's a couple different ways that information um, can and already is organized on the web. I mean, Google, I mean, talk about a, a revolution, uh, really, you know, uh, uh, built search technology to make it so that individuals could find exactly what they were looking for in, you know, seconds, which was a true revolution. But... Google, in that sense, is its own filter of the web. It's what um, a, a team of uh, genius uh, engineers uh, build every day to make sure that it's actually useful um, for us to be able to find the information we're most interested in. I think the filter at Facebook is a little bit different. It, too, is a filter for information in, the same, in, in a similar sense that Google is, except that it's what your, your friends, your colleagues, your family members are... Um, interested in at any given point in time. So it doesn't require you to say, okay, I want to find out about, you know, what are sporting events coming up in Delhi this weekend. Instead, you might find a sporting event that's going that one of your friends is attending through, uh, through the Facebook feed. So I think these things are really Im important and we need, the world needs both. We need a place where we can find a, an answer to a very specific question like Google, but we also need uh, other filters that can help us make sure we can get to the most interesting information as efficiently as possible. I'm sure Google there is breathing easy. Can we take a question from the back, please? Billy? Given the popularity of Facebook and Twitter and things like this, do you envisage a day in the near future when part of your corporate social responsibility would be to hold the addiction kind of program so that people can the addiction is that what you're saying? <laughs> this is a good problem yeah this is, yeah, this is a good a good problem to have um, 
it's funny because, you know, I think, um, I think, I think that the language of addiction is always so interesting to me when it comes to something like Facebook because, um, you know, addiction is, is something that you always want and that you, uh, you, you, you really need. But to me, we need social interaction. You know, we're, we're social individuals and we crave that. And in fact, we need that in order to exist as a, as a, as a society. So um, I, I think that, you know, people can use Facebook more responsibly than others. And I think that um, there's, there's all sorts of, of uses for it. But I mean, I, for one, I keep Facebook open all day long in a tab in my browser. I have my email open in one tab, I have Facebook open in one tab, and I have my calendar open in one tab. And um, in that sense, it's a way, I don't, think, I don't at all think of it as, as an addiction to Facebook. I think that um, it's a way that just as I use email to find out what, uh, what my colleagues and friends are saying or, want, or need to say to me, it's a way for me to find uh, what they're saying to, uh, to one another and, and to me directly. So um, to the extent that social interaction is an addiction, I think that uh, we all need to be more, more, uh, more thoughtful about how we interact with, with each other. Okay, last question from the left to the right. Sure. Hi, uh, my question comes from the point of view of a youth marketer. It's a two-part question. Stand up, please. Sorry. Uh, I have a two-part question, uh, which is something about how it's, uh, you know, with reference to how companies like Facebook survive, that's money. One is it seems that, you know, social media advertising has become all about numbers, you know, uh, where the pay-per-click model, paper impression, etc. Uh, while, it, therefore, it lacks traditional qualitative engagement, which leads to either sales conversion or brand growth. So how will this bubble survive if, in terms of ROI for advertisers? And my second part is, so then the fundamental question arises about how sustainably profitable are social media enterprises in terms of, because it's a business, right? It's not a public utility service and you have investors. So that's yeah, my that's question. Yeah. But, yeah, absolutely. So um, when it comes to advertising, advertising is, is the revenue source on Facebook. And there's, there's several different types of, of ads. There's um, some of the more traditional ones that, that you would uh, expect, the things that sit on the side of the page, which um, are targeted to... Um, uh, certain people, uh, dependent on what the advertiser is, is interested in or, or advertising. But I think that the, the future of advertising on a place like Facebook is much more in, um, in and around the, what are called, what we call social engagement ads. So in other words, um, a company can come in and sort of seed a piece of content on Facebook, which then opens up the possibility for people to interact with it to click that little like button, to say, oh, I think this is interesting, to comment on it, to send it to a friend, maybe to post it on their profile. There's all sorts of ways that people can interact with that content. And what is really interesting, and I think promising to, to me, is a, the, this vision of the world where advertising stops being about pushing things on people, but instead becomes about offering something up and then enabling the people that are interested in it to say, oh, this is cool, I want to tell my friends. So the old paradigm would be to show a sexy uh, uh, model with a car and say, you should go and buy this. And the new model would be to, uh, to uh, have uh, someone say, oh, I just bought this car and it's amazing. This in particular, I really like about it. Or here's a, here's, here's a photo of me in my, in my new car and it's great. So Facebook has... has is, is I think just beginning honestly uh, to experiment with all of these different advertising um, uh, opportunities. Um, so we'll see we'll see where it goes. Thank you very much, Chris. That was a fantastic.